the Bear is brought to you by Price Picks and the Game Time app. And welcome into Poke the Bear, presented by Prize Picks. Go use that promo code CLNS to get $50 back when you play $5. And we're presented by Game Time. Go use that promo code CLNS to get $20 off that first purchase. Terms apply. I am Evan Marinovsky. That is Connor Ryan. Connor, what is up? Evan, I'm doing well. How you doing? Doing great, doing great. I know you just got back from the golf tournament. Uh, they didn't let you. They didn't let you win longest I, drive I, or closest to the hole. You know, Evan, I, I looked the pot. I would say, but I even got my little my little daiquiri uh, polo. I was all ready to roll, and then I was like, you know what? We would be a really tough way to start the years if I just completely like mess up. If I had a chance to to tee off and just completely fucked it up, like. The vibes are all messed up the whole rest of the year. So, you know, maybe it's a good thing and I didn't. Yeah, it's sort of, you know, it's like there's the chance that it's a big boomer bust moment. It could be incredible or not so incredible. So and think uh, and think how annoying I would be if I actually like absolutely smoked it. I would just keep on talking uh, about it. It'd be like, oh, be like, and Dece- you have right to. Be like December like 15th and be like, we're well, talking about like Lysel and whether you should get bumped up the lineup or something. Be like, do you remember when I hit that that rocket? <laughs> That's all I talk about. If you this podcast would be down the shitter, as they say, Evan. Well, like, you'd be like, you think Lysel could hit a ball that far? I don't know. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Not as far as me. Um, so, anyways, always uh, an interesting event. I think they. I didn't watch any of it, but they live streamed uh, like Freddie versus everybody. Uh, so I'm curious how that turned out. I don't dude know how it a, turned out. Dude has two hole in ones in 370 days. He said. I saw absurd. that. I can't get Most a hole in one. Most hole in ones in their life. Yeah, I can't get a hole in one at like Pirates Cove mini golf <laughs> down in the Cape. Like, I don't know, this dude can do that, but props to Freddie. Two hole in ones in less or just over a year is remarkable. Okay. I mean, that's like using all your luck into just golf. Like, you've used up, it, but it's worth it. A hole in one, like the euphoria of a hole in one. If you guys have had a hole in one before, comment. Because um, I'm curious, like, it's just got to be a euphoric feeling that can't be duplicated no mini golf also counts too if you got a hole in one at pirates cove anywhere like that maybe the one up in saugus hit it off like the orange dinosaur's face <laughs> hit a hole in one please drop 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 a, a a comment below on youtube please it is heartbreaking when in mini golf you just miss a hole in one and it's like man if i just miss a hole in one here imagine what it would be like to actually hit one on a, a real golf course um i actually had one not to i'm not diving don't worry we're not going to dive into like personal stories but i'm sort of a beginner golfer still i've only started to learn sort of in the past like three four years and earlier this year i was having a horrible game and on like hole four um i just hit it perfectly and it was within like five feet of the hole and it was you know because from my angle it's like oh my god that's going in Th- that's going in. everyone's like no 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 but it almost went in so it was close it was close there you go. That's fine. Listen, it's all it's the little things, Evan. Especially in golf, like you'll you'll take. What, what, I, I'm happy when it lifts off the ground. That's what I that's what I prioritize. So yes, I always say to people like if I can have a couple good hits in a round of eighteen, that's all I need. I'm okay with that. Like, that cool in a post golf glizzy, that I'm good. I'm locked in. It's a good day. It's a good day. At the links. you know what? I agree with you. Uh, you know what's perfect playing golf or after golf transfusions. Have you ever had oh, one? Like, dude, of course, yes. No, I so multiple good. before golf, during golf, after golf. Yeah, transfusions are unbelievable. So, I got some for at home, and I'd have them just as I was, you know, watching TV or whatever. You know, pounded down like ten. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big golf guy. <laughs> yeah. But I, it doesn't hit the same. It hits. It's so much better uh, on the links. It really is. It's called like links drinks or whatever, but it's yeah, still it's good. Like, it's, it's like still a goaded drink. Yeah, it depends on where the spot is. Like, if you're having, if you're at, like the beach and it's nine degrees out, and you have a nice Corona with like Ooh. a little lime, the setting fits it right. If you're like in Madison, Wisconsin, in January, and it's negative eleven degrees, and you're having a Corona with lime, you're a psycho. So, and like, they, they give you the can there. instead of the bottle. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the does, worst. It, yeah, exactly. Does not does not work in that setting. There. So it all depends on scenery, location, all those things. 
for something like transfusions. We've turned into booze beat. <laughs> that's what we've that's what we are the first five minutes just we're still we're still drink? at the very end of the off season we're, we're almost there evan but we're not quite there's a few not things quite. to talk about but we're not training camp has not started yet no no it has not uh rookie camp though was uh wednesday and thursday and someone whose stock continues to rise and it really started back in the summer when don sweeney mentioned his name as someone who could compete for a roster spot is riley duran uh, and Riley Duran spoke on Wednesday and, you know, uh, he was asked, you know, is it encouraging the guys ahead of you um, have, have, have made the, you know, have pushed hard and actually made the team. And he was saying it is. And, you know, he talked a little bit about, you know, what it was like, for, what, what Sweeney said to him in terms of uh, making the team and what he'd have to do to make the team. Um, training camp has not started yet. Obviously, the prospects challenge is this weekend. Uh, how realistic is this Duran stock rise, uh, lasting? Well, I think when you listen to what Ryan Mujanel, um, has said about him the last couple of times we've, we've spoken to him, um, it does seem like he's a guy that they're very high on now. What does that mean? Does that mean he's going to be the, the potter of this camp, right? And make a legitimate push when no one really expected him to. Um, but like we, we spoke to Mujanel on Wednesday And uh, I'll just read off like the quote he had, but uh, talking about Riley Duran, I was a bit surprised at his skill set and separation, his hands shot. He's a player. And it's funny because the truth is some guys games translate better to pro than they do in college and junior. And I think he's one of those guys. I expect him to really push. I think he's a Monty type player, Chris Kelly type player, and they're going to enjoy him pretty, Hmm. like pretty Hmm. high in terms of what, what he provides there. And again, like, what does that mean? Is that mean that, If a guy gets banged up, he's the first guy up, which I think when you look at just how little pro experience he has, that is still a good sign. This is a guy that his skill set is more catered to the pro game or he's already kind of a a refined product, right? I mean, a lot of these guys who um, go through Providence, Nate Lehman um, is someone that Durant has credited quite a bit in terms of getting him ready in terms of how good a coach he is and getting him set for that next step of what hockey provides. But like, look at how many, especially like this, th- I don't want to say this in terms of it being like uh, a disrespectful thing, but like Providence, oh God, like turn. No, I'm not saying it's because of that, that national championship game against Providence that never happened against BU, but they have like such a great track record of like solid middle six players or like even fourth line guys who have long productive careers just because they're so sound in their game. They play a solid two way game. They're physical. Um, you even look at a guy like Nola Chari, right? Who I think mm-hmm. Bruce Cassidy would always say like was so physical, but never put himself in a bad spot. Never like took penalties. Like these guys like through Lehman's program are just so kind of well equipped for um, what that next step of their pro career is. And kind of feels like Duran's kind of cut from that same cloth. So um, even if he doesn't make a push maybe out of camp and you look at just how many guys they have there where we're looking at the the bottom six and, you know, you've got Beecher and Castellick and Jones and Brazo even, um, there's no shortage of options out there. But if Duran's a guy that can really make a name for himself in camp, if he can go down to Providence and really put up numbers, especially out of the gate, and set himself apart, even if it's he's the first guy up when there's an injury. I think that shows you where they kind of view his value. And he's a guy that, again, if it's not this year at camp, he sure feels like a guy that, you know, I'm not saying because he's a Woburn guy, he went to a college in Hockey East, but he does feel like a guy that if he hits his uh, his projection and, and where his kind of timeline is, he should be a guy that could be a, a fourth line kind of stalwart for this team for the next couple of years if all goes right with how he plays. Yeah, going into training camp, I am going in with the belief that he's going to be like a first up if someone gets injured. Because I think he's also a guy, like, and we've talked about this with Patra and other young guys, would you rather have them in small roles in the NHL or playing in much bigger roles all the time in the AHL? And I think Duran falls under that category of just getting more and more professional hockey reps up here. In Boston, it's going to be a fourth liner or a third liner. Down in Providence, I would assume it would be somewhere in the top six or just at least playing a lot, um, which is a good thing. The other interesting thing, uh, Mujanel's comments. Mujanel is typically positive 
about prospects. You won't hear him just like rip guys. He, you know, he's not Bruce Cassidy uh, in terms of, you know, talking about certain guys. Um, but to make the Chris Kelly comparison and to openly say, yeah, that's a Monty guy. Like mm-hmm. he makes sense for what Monty's looking for. I, I, I'm with you. I think that says a lot. Um, and that's sort of a reading between the tea leaves of this is someone who they legitimately believe in, not just like, oh, you know, he's been great down there, blah, blah, blah. Like, I think this is a guy that they now view as someone who is going to fit in their bottom six. Um, and I think, you know, even though, you know, I don't know Duran's game perfectly. I'm not, you know, Mark Diver who watched like every Providence game <laughs> the past bunch of years. Um, but I do think that his style um well, it's not, you know, bruising physical like Castellick and Jones and guys like that. Mm-hmm. I do think that responsible game obviously has a place down in the bottom six. And that kind of makes him a perfect replacement player who can step in on a moment's notice and fill time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And again, as you said, I don't have the the full game tape of what a guy like Duran offers, but it does seem like he is that blend of a really refined game. He's not going to put himself in bad spots, take bad penalties, but can be physical. And I think there's a lot of value in what those guys are and what they can provide. Um, and again, who knows? Maybe it's something where uh, he develops more and becomes more of a physical player like Frederick. I know it's also, it goes to what Mujanel said, where you can be one type of player in college where it's probably a little bit more buttoned up, a little bit more restricted in terms of how much leeway you have. Like, I don't think Jackson Edward could uh, be playing the player he is in Hockey East, right, in terms of just how aggressive and physical he is. But where Mujanel says that Duran, you know, hit the pro game is better suited to him, maybe it does kind of open up his his game a little bit. We knew that they projected, like, Trent Frederick as a guy who could be really physical, but he wasn't dropping the gloves every game like he was in Providence when he was at Wisconsin, right? So uh, I think especially whether it's, again – up at the NHL level, maybe in these preseason games or a full year down in Providence, seeing how Duran kind of adjusts and, and molds his game to what the pro game pro game requires, I think it's going to be really interesting to follow this year. I agree. I agree. Uh, I want to get into more rookie camp, guys. I want to get into Brad Martian's latest comments. First, though, quick words from our friends over prize picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community today. Sign up today and get $50 instantly. When you play $5, you don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. One Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss this deal on prize picks because it's gone when September ends. Prize Picks invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money, even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy so that your lineup stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, your picks are still live. Big questions going into the football season. Will Patrick Mahomes throw for more or less than 267.5 yards one week? Will Jalen Hurts throw for 240.5 passing yards another? Download the PrizePix app today and use code CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code CLNS on PrizePix to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus because it's guaranteed. PrizePix run your game now back to the show so rookie camp rosters came out on wednesday um and no fabian lysel uh no no matt patra either uh on that list um who are some other rookie yeah no merkulov uh who are some rookie camp guys aside from riley duran that you have your eye on 
Yeah, I mean, two of the things stand out to me, uh, John Farinacci, who obviously was a, a big signing for the Bruins last year, um, had three years at Harvard, was a captain, Ted uh nephew, um, a guy that uh, was viewed as one of the best college free agents out on the market when uh, the Bruins signed him. Again, maybe he's viewed as more of a bottom six player, but kind of like Duran um, has was projected as having a really sound two way game could be a productive, like third line center at the next level. If all goes well for him, um, had a pretty promising first year in Providence had nearly 40 points in 70 plus games. Uh, both he and Ryan Mujanel mentioned that the biggest hurdle for him wasn't really the elevated competition or the physicality or some of these other things. It had more to do with the schedule. I mean, Farinacci mentioned that his senior year because of injuries, he only played, I think 20 games, but it's not like he really played too many games anyway in college hockey. And he goes from 20 games to 71 plus playoffs Providence. Like every player is going to kind of hit a wall at multiple times. And that's something that he had to adjust to. Um, it feels like he's better equipped for it this year. So again, I don't know if he's going to make a push like a guy like Duran, maybe, especially when you've got guys like Patra and Mark Yulov, and even like Tyler Johnson. Um, there's quite a few guys ahead of him, but He's a guy that I think you should keep tabs on, especially in Providence, see how he builds off of his game. And then I'd also say Jackson Edward, um, how he fares his first kind of full year in Providence. He's a guy that even if maybe he ends up being a spare defenseman, a guy you bring up if you need kind of just more of a a little bit of bite to your game and a little bit more bite to your lineup, um, I think he's going to be a really fun guy to watch. Pretty dynamic player for a guy who's got the profile of just a super aggressive uh, guy on the blue line. Uh, and I feel like we're going to get a whole lot of tweets from, uh, you know, from the, the usual suspects who are keeping tabs on all things Providence uh, Bruins. We're going to get a whole lot of highlights of Jackson Edward just sending the guy into next week, dropping the gloves. He's going to be, really, I think, really fun uh, prospect to watch and seeing kind of how he adjusts to the next level and what his role at the NHL level might be down the road. It's kind of tough to map out. He's a very raw prospect, but he's a lot of fun. And I think... And when you're the Bruins, you're trying to find these kind of guys further down the depth chart who can kind of add another element to the game. There's not a lot of guys that play kind of the aggressive style of play that Jackson Edward does. So he's a guy I'm definitely keeping tabs on. He's the he's the next Nicholas Cronwall. That's what it is. Yes, he's the, he's the next Nicholas Cronwall. Does, it doesn't sound um, as good. He got, he got Edwarded. He didn't get Cronwalled. <laughs> we got to think of something. He got jacked. Yeah. Maybe he that maybe jacked. that works. There you go. Yeah, it's much better <laughs> yeah, than that. Much better than Edwarded. Edward did <laughs> ED and ED. Yes. Um, just perfect. Uh, mine is Brett Harrison. I think Brett Harrison's an interesting one. Played a full year in Providence last year, 14 points, 47 games, sort of an adjustment type year. Um, what's that next step like? Former third round pick, so there are legitimate, you know, expectations there. Um, so he's a guy that, you know, coming out of you know the OHL and Katie and Junior, you know, what what do you have in him? He is a center. So again, like that's, you know, a position of need in this organization. Um, Is he someone that you can rely upon going forward? And what is that next step like in Providence? I I don't see him making uh, the varsity unless he has a kick-ass training camp. Um, But what's that next step going to look like um, down in Providence? And I think it's tough because now, you know, um, for younger centers in the, in the organization, you have Patra and Merkulov um, sort of at the top. And I'm not including like Dean Latorno. It's, I mean, that's years and years away. Right. Um, but just even those two guys, like having to beat those guys out. You also have Elias Lindholm uh, as a top center. So again, a guy like Brett Harrison, you want to hold on to. But if he kicks ass this year in Providence, like does he boost his stock enough to be a trade chip? Um, does he prove that he needs to be with this roster? I think there's a lot of intrigue there uh, with him. Um, so Brett Harrison would, would be my other one. Uh, and by the way, that prospects challenge starts this weekend in Beautiful, sunny, scenic Buffalo, New York. So beautiful. Um, and also, beautiful uh, I believe the Bruins um, Bruins are going to be able to stream the the games. They play three total games during this tournament. I think it's Buffalo's feed technically, but I believe if you go on the Bruins website, uh, they told us today that you'll be able to watch uh, some of the, the tape. I don't think it's got a broadcast or anything, but if you just want to watch hockey after a few months away from it, you can go on the Bruins site and watch uh, watch these guys out there on the ice. 
It's going to be like I know a you, I know you, camera. I know you've already seen a lot of hockey already, Evan. I know you're a seasoned vet at this point, but I am. Been, if people haven't been roaming through Foxborough or anything like that. They want to watch some hockey. They can if they go on the Bruins website this weekend. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, it'll be like a live barn feed. But I, I assume it's a lot better than a live barn feed. Um, have you have you like d- um, seen any like stuff on live? Oh, barn before? yes, I have. Yes. Yeah, by the way, I think it's a great service because it does. It's it's awesome for what it does with like, you know, parents watching kids games that they can't be there, uh, clipping kids highlights, you know, all that stuff. But it is like, you know, like zooming in, trying to see because you were used to, you know, High end <laughs> broadcasts. Um, so, uh, but yes, uh, fans can go watch that there. Uh, by the way, if you guys want to go to preseason games or regular season games or any event, you should check out our friends over at game time fall is beginning which means football is back nothing beats a college football atmosphere and with both college and nfl games who doesn't love a good tailgate get to the game with game time game time has a new feature called game time picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier game time picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. This fall, my friends and I are going to the Patriots-Titans game in Tennessee. And how will we get tickets for the game? Game time, of course. The super deal has been amazing to us in the past, and there's no doubt it will be great to us again. I just love the curated deals, which make it easier to find the best price on great seats. Some other features I love or the lowest price guarantee, or GameTime will credit you 110% of the difference. GameTime Picks, curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, and theater. All-in pricing, toggling this feature shows the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. So, download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Now, back to the show. So at that golf tournament on Thursday, Brad Marchand spoke to the media again. Second time already. Much uh, much appreciation to him. Captain's um, duty. Yes, Captain's duty. And he loves it. He loves it. I, I think he, he, he it's great. He, he enjoys it. And he's a terrific listen. Um, but he mentioned, you know, he was asked you know, how he's doing in his uh, recovery. And he said, you know, he expects uh, that if he's not ready for day one of training camp, that he'll be ready within the first couple days. And uh, then he was asked, you know, about opening night. He does not expect to miss opening night. I think this is obviously very good news for the Bruins. Um, and again, I, I, I'm curious to see sort of what his, progressions are through camp in terms of how ready he is i still think though a vet like him i mean you know he's so used to it i know we've talked a lot about you know him getting older but in terms of getting amped to get going i don't doubt brad marchand in that category no uh, i mean he mentioned again today that he's feeling better and he's probably ahead of expectations in terms of when he should be back uh with the full team he's already skating obviously it seems like from what he mentioned once again today, kind of what he echoed last week, um, the biggest issue is probably right now is just conditioning and getting kind of back up to speed uh, there as opposed to, you know, the lingering effects from the surgery or injuries or anything like that. It just seemed like it is more or less just getting his his legs back uh, back under him. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm not really concerned with, you know, what he's, you know, the – the injury or anything like that or how he's feeling or how you can get, you know, ramped back up. I think it's just the natural progressions. And this is a guy that again had double hip surgery a few years ago and was supposed to come back by what, Thanksgiving and he's back like four games into the season. So <laughs> I think, uh, unfortunately a lot would have to go wrong with a setback or something like that, uh, for him to not be ready for October 8th in Florida. Um, but again, I, I still view all this as, more of a positive than anything. Like I, I understand this is a guy that's gone, gone under the knife quite a bit in the last couple of years with uh, procedures after the season, he's getting up there in age. But I think especially when you look at that elbow um, that he said is re- was really bothering him. And the fact that you looked at later on in the year, we just couldn't seem to, you know, get that one timer going. or seemed to like to be making that extra pass. Um, 
if that elbow is repaired and he's able to, you know, take more of that shot first mentality moving forward, be it at five on five play or especially the power play, it just makes the team that much better moving forward. It does. It does. And it's funny with him always wanting to come back. Remember all the times it's been a couple of times, I think of him like yelling at the concussion spotter, just being like, what the hell, man? Like, what are you taking yeah. me out for? I remember the one um, time he was taken out and he, after the game was like, yeah, the guy was like, must've been eating like a cheeseburger or something. Like wasn't paying attention to the extra game. He was not happy getting pulled from the game for, I think it was like the like second half of a period or something like that. It was, it was a long time. He was not thrilled. I do remember this. I remember that. Um, Speaking of the top six, uh, someone that, you know, the golf tournament featured a lot of uh, on Thursday was Trent Frederick. Um, as we mentioned at the start of the podcast, you know, two holes in ones, two hole in ones in the last year is bananas. I mean, that is like, I, I have never heard of that. I mean, maybe again, I'm not super into golf, so there's probably lots of people that have done that, but that is still wild. It'd be funny um, if you're actually both just really bad and everyone has actually done it. Just, you know. <laughs> We're just missing out. Like, you guys suck. What the yeah. hell? I mean, true, um, but. W- oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Um, well, wasn't it like I could have maybe like not watched it correctly? I don't know if you saw this video, but the Bruins, like McAvoy, and I think Tuka Rask did like a um, a collab with like an lpga golfer and like mcavoy's first shot off the tee was like a little dribbler to the left that he just kind of like didn't hit well and i'm like that mm-hmm. would be me if you put a camera yes. on me like that i would do the exact same thing that'd be me um, for most of the day so yes oh god yeah so trent frederick is an interesting case because he's going into being a free agent um he's gonna be a free agent after this coming year um you know you, you think about sort of the the uh, the steps he's taken in the last two years to be more productive, to be more of a, a predominant force in the Bruins lineup, you know, towing that line between enforcer and also just a guy who can produce offense. Um, could he be the guy who gets that first crack with Coyle and Marchand? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's definitely a good chance of that happening. And I think it there's a couple of different factors that go into it, right? Like, one, what are the younger players like a Lysel um, going to do in that spot? Because it does seem like they're more tailored towards what, you know, the skill that you're looking for in the top six. Again, Martian mentioned it last week, how like whoever gets in that spot has to be responsible down both ends of the ice. Might be a bit of a roadblock for these younger players where it's to be expected for there to be <laughs> thought, some struggles. I thought you said Roblox. <laughs> no, no, I don't even know what the fuck Roblox are. I, I've heard oh. the term, but I don't know. Is it like Minecraft? It's a, it's a little kid video game. Okay. A little yes, kid no, video we're not game. talking. No, Roadblox. Uh, he loves Roblox. That's what yes. it is. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the Bruins process. Maybe they do like Ro- Ro- Roblox. I don't know, but I don't I think they do. Okay, uh, I digress. Uh, but when you look at what Lysel can provide there, it makes sense that you project him as more of a top six player. Now, if the Bruins are looking at that line with Marshan and Charlie Coyle, and you're looking at it as more of maybe like a shutdown line, maybe put in a guy like Frederick who has really good underlying defensive numbers, has played really well with Coyle over the years, maybe that's what you're looking for there. And maybe the third line is kind of a, a younger line with, you know, could be Patra, Lysel with an older guy like a Geeky, something like that. Um, that could be the case. It, and also it maybe depends on what Frederick can do. Like if the Bruins think Frederick has a higher ceiling and he can be a consistent 20 goal, 25 goal guy, maybe you put him in that spot as well. So um, I think in terms of internal guys on the roster, it makes sense that I think Frederick would be the first guy up because I think there's a lot of intrigue of having that, Marsha and Coyle group be kind of that shutdown uh, line and a guy like Frederick would really compliment them, but a whole lot of factors have to be up in the year in terms of maybe where you start the year and where maybe you, you end it in terms of the end of camp. If Frederick is that guy. It's interesting. Cause you know, we talked a lot about Marshan's comments uh, last week or, or the week before, and it was a lot of that. Okay. This points to them wanting to play with a Frederick or a Morgan Kiki. I just think internally, like, and we've talked about this a lot as well. You've got to see what you have in Lysel. And I don't know if like a young third line is essentially what you want. Cause as we've, you know, to me, it's either Patra or Merck for that third line center spot. And so then you're going to put Lysel with them. Like, even though Patra played a little bit last year, I still want 
veterans around him. So right. again, I like I like the idea of a shutdown line with Frederick. Um, I'm also intrigued to see what sort of offensive production he can bring, uh, or he could bring in sort of an elevated role because he's going to be motivated as hell, like <laughs> to put up a bunch of points this year because he could get seriously paid next off season, and that could be a huge storyline throughout the year. Like if he comes out and, and you know if he finished the year with something around you know 45, 50 points. It's like, all right, like this dude's in a different bracket. Like we're not looking at him for, you know, we're looking at him com- for completely different money. So right. um, I think he's going to be motivated and I think he'd do fine in that spot. I just also want to see what Lysel can give you. That's my biggest thing. And I don't know if you can start camp with that um, or make him earn it, make him work his way up the lineup. I mean, that might be the the route that they take where it's like, oh, we're not going to make him, you know, satisfied on day one. We want him to to earn it, which is perfectly valid. Uh, and tends to be how they like to do things, making guys earn it. So um, Frederick will be interesting. Top six will be interesting. Uh, and everything. Everything's interesting, Connor. Everything. Uh, but what can the people look forward to from you over at the Globe and Boston.com? Yeah, we'll have you covered every step of the way now that uh, training camp is finally upon us. So whether it's looking at lineup, uh, lineup battles, uh, we have a few features in the works columns, breakdowns, all that good stuff. You can find all of it over at boston.com and the Boston Globe. So you can read my stuff over there. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can at Connor Ryan underscore 93. Go do all that. That has been this week's episode of Poke the Bear. Connor Ryan, Evan Marinovsky, Poke the Bear listeners. Have a great rest of your week. <laughs>